The U.S. Army's 106th Infantry Division was stood up on May 5, 1942, as the United States entered World War II. They relieved the 2nd Infantry Division on December 11, 1944. According to the Army Field Service Manual, one division would be responsible for no more than five miles of front. At the time, the 106 was covering almost 26 miles of front. During the Ardennes campaign, the Germans attacked the 106th on December 16, 1944. The divisions 422nd and 423rd Infantry Regiments were surrounded and cut off by enemy forces in the area of Schaumburg. They regrouped and formed a counterattack, but were stopped by the enemy. They surrendered on December 19th. The Germans captured 6,000 prisoners of war, which stands as one of the largest mass surrenders in American military history. This is known as the Battle of the Bulge, and this is one soldier's story. I'm John Robb, date of birth, January 19th, 1925. I was born in Vandergrift, Pennsylvania, which is 30 miles northeast of Pittsburgh. I was a, I was a depression kid. My father worked in a steel plant. He always had a job, but some weeks he would only work one day or two days. We were at a family. I was the youngest of four. I was the only boy in the family and I was my dad's buddy. He had hunting dogs, thoroughbred beagles, and he raised these and he sold them, sold pups to make, to make money, which he did. And so I took care of the dogs, helped train them, I was in 11th grade on December 7th, 1941, the day the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. It was a Sunday. The next day in school, being in 11th grade, the guys, that's all we talked about. We were afraid the war was going to be over before we would get a chance to get out of high school and get there. Sometimes you worry about the wrong things. But I was called up for, for the draft after I graduated from high school and I went to New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, which was the, uh, where, uh, where I was uh, inducted. And so the recruiter or the man at the, in the uh, station in New Cumberland said, well, then this is, since you've got no work experience, this would be a good place for you to go to train war dogs in Colorado. So this sounded great to me. And, uh, and so he was writing this up and then he said, oh, wait a minute, you had a good score on the exam here. He said, there's a program now, Army Specialized Training Program. And he said, you go to infantry basic training, and then you go to college for four years. And oh my, this sounded good to me, you know. And I said, well, uh, I think I would like that. And so I went to Fort Benning, Georgia, and took infantry basic training. And then in the meantime, they invaded Normandy. And so uh, we were, they forgot about the college part and we all went to the infantry. And I joined, that's when I was sent to Camp Atterbury, Indiana, which is just south of Indianapolis, with the 106th Infantry Division. And that's where I, that's how I got there, yeah. I should have gone to the dogs. <laughs> we uh, went up, shipped out of New York on the uh, Aquitania, and it was a, it was uh, un unescorted to Europe. It took five days. It was very fast. It changed course every sen seven minutes. This was so the submarines wouldn't have a chance to zero in. 
and it, the, the, the seas were very rough. And uh, the first few days, and everybody was seasick. We had, it was crowded. We had, I think there were 12,000 aboard. This was December of 44. The Germans had been in, in the war for a number of years. Of course, we were young and we weren't too smart. We thought we, 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 were, we were wanting to go. We wanted to get there, yeah. We disembarked at uh, La Harve and uh, crawled over the side of the ship on ropes down into a LCI landing craft for infantry where it was crowded. This was December and it was freezing cold and my feet haven't been warm since. They were, they haven't. And uh, so we, we, of course you had, being in the infantry, everything you, used or owned was on your back. And uh, so we were, we were in that area and then we went directly to the front, which at that point was, the front was on the Siegfried Line, which is the border between Belgium and Germany. And we replaced the second infantry division, which was an old tough outfit. They had been everywhere. We were there on the Seaford line on our, on our south to the right was the, the old Pennsylvania National Guard, the old 28th Division, the old Bloody Bucket. And uh, to our north on our left was the 99th Infantry Division. And uh, of course it was, it was winter, it was cold. It was one of the coldest winters they had had in Europe in several decades, yeah, cold weather. Well, an infantry division has three regiments. And the, the, the 422nd, which was my regiment, and the 423rd were on the line. And this is typical, the 424th was the reserve regiment in, in reserve behind. and. Uh, so we were, this was a very quiet sector. And, uh, and then the Germans had this plan. They, they hit with uh, a quarter of a million men. And we were, we were surrounded and uh, we fought for three days and we were getting out of ammunition. And we tried to take the town of Schaumburg, Belgium. Uh, and this is, this is a town where I was captured. I would, have never, I would have never surrendered. I would have been afraid to because I figured they would have shot me. But I was ordered to surrender by my, by my uh, first sergeant. I would have never, never surrendered. Yeah. I was in a mortar platoon. I was a uh, second gunner on an 81 millimeter mortar and uh, so we, we destroyed those and uh, before, we, before we were captured, before we surrendered. And uh, they, they uh, marched us for three days into Germany and uh, then we got put on a train on a, actually it was a, not a train, it was, these were like cattle cars. And uh, there, I don't know if you've ever seen the Holocaust Museum in Washington. They have one of these cars there. Sixty men in one of those cars. It's unbelievable that, that you could be crowded in that way. But we had sixty guys. No food, no water, no nothing. And uh, on, on Christmas, that was December 22nd, I went on on the train. And we arrived at our destination on Christmas afternoon. And, uh, but Christmas Eve, we were laying in the, the train was in the railroad yard in Limburg, Germany. And it was bombed. In those days, the Americans bombed in, in the daylight 
the British bombed at night, and the British bombed the the yard, the railroad yard in Limburg, and uh, nobody in my car was killed, but we lost a lot of guys on that train. Yeah, and but we got to Bad Orb, Bad Orb, Germany, where where the prison camp was, and we disembarked, and uh, walked five kilometers up the mountain to the prison camp. The first barracks I was in was not so bad. We had, uh, we had bunks that were three tiers, and I slept on the top bunk, and I had, a I had a mattress, you know, a straw mattress, and a blanket. It was cold, but we, we only got a small amount of firewood to keep the place warm, they, they had a lot of uh, British prisoners that had been captured at Dunkirk in 1940. And these, these men had been prisoners four years, and they were the most miserable people you ever ran into. They were tough. And they came, they were, came to our camp to keep away from the Russians. They, they moved them into our good, what I called a good barracks, where we had bunks, and we moved us into a barracks where there were no beds, there was nothing. We slept on the floor, and it was crowded at, at, at night. Uh, it was cold, and uh, I had my two good buddies, Dave Wyman from Portland, Maine, and Boyd Rutledge from Minneapolis, Minnesota. We each had a blanket, so we used those. And it, that whole place was crowded. There was no place to walk at night when everybody would be on the floor. And so it was so crowded, when you wanted to turn over in bed, you had to tell the other two guys, and everybody had to t turn the same way at the same time. But, but we lived through it, you know? It's, it's a wonder we did. There was very little food, very little food. What did they feed you? For breakfast, we had Airsatz coffee, which is, Airsatz is, what, what's it mean in German? It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't coffee, I'll tell you. But that was it, just a little bit of coffee. Lunchtime, you got a bowl of soup. We had a, we, each guy had a metal tin. And that you would get in line and, and get your soup. And for dinner, there would six guys would get a loaf of of German bread. It was the German army lived on it. They hauled it in in trucks, and it could get rained on or snowed on, and it was was hard as a rock. It didn't make any difference. But anyway, six guys would eat a loaf of bread. For, for dinner, and each guy took his turn cutting up the, the bread into six sections. Whoever cut the bread was last to get his pick. So you had to, we would really study that, and you didn't want to get cheated. And then, so that was, every six days you cut the loaf, yeah. Uh, we, here a couple nights ago, Marilyn had a a, a, a bunch of old photographs, and in there she had a, showed me a picture of my old girlfriend, which I had with me. She, she probably didn't see it, but on the back, we used to talk about food and what we were going to eat when when we got home. And and I had all you know real. Of course, we didn't have any paper or anything, so real tiny small printing what we were going to have for breakfast and what we were going to have for lunch and for dinner and. And yeah, yeah. That's all we did was talk about food. You had nothing to do. <laughs> the only work I ever did, they had lots of guys were dying, and they would have funeral detail. And when you were on funeral detail, when you that day you would get an extra bowl of soup. So I liked that. Yeah. One of the guys, there were six of us, we would carry a, 
um, a, a, not a coffin, but a little, it was a, a, a built, a wooden built uh, structure. We would carry that to the cemetery. I was captured December 19th, 44. Our camp was liberated, one of the first to be liberated, April 2, April 2nd of 45. The uh, 40th Infantry Division, the Third Army, came in, and uh, my buddy from Portland, Maine, Dave Wyman, he was looking out the window, and he yelled to me, he said, Rob, the Yanks are here, and the, the tanks were coming, busting down the fence. Yeah. They had, oh, that was, that was a wonderful, wonderful day. But they couldn't take us out. <coughs> They had to keep moving uh, the gasoline. They needed the trucks to move the gasoline to the front for the tanks. And so that was April 2. And I guess I'm not just exactly sure, but I was there, oh, I'm sure more than a week after that. It's like it was a very cold winter. You never had your clothes off. You never had your clothes off. And uh, from December to April, kind of stinky, you know. But anyway, we got taken out by British lorries, driven out to a place where we got our, our clothes burned. We got deloused. We had lice. We got deloused and got new clothes. We went to Frankfurt. Of course, Frankfurt was obliterated. But we got on a plane. This was the first time I had ever been on an airplane. And uh, <clears throat> we were sitting, I think we were sitting on buckets there in there, crowded. <clears throat> but we flew from there into the area of Le Havre in France. Uh, the name of the airplane was Out of This World. And uh, it was, uh, like I said, my first time in the air. And we went to, uh, uh, in, in the area of uh, uh, France where we were, they had these ramp camps or repatriated allied military personnel camps. They were called cigarette camps. I was at Camp Lucky Strike, and uh, so we were there. Of course, there, there, the food was there. Had lots of food, and they were. We were waiting. Of course, the war's still on. We were waiting for a ship back to the U.S. And uh, of course, we we were very happy, and with all of good food we had, and the Red Cross girls were there with coffee and donuts, and, and uh, I hate to tell you how many donuts I ate one day, you know. But uh, while I was there, we had a chance to go to Paris. And, and uh, I, di I did that, and the Army had taken over some hotels in Paris. So I think I was in Paris for three days, and we did sightseeing, and uh, uh, oh, it was, it was a, a, a beautiful, beautiful, I mean, Paris, Paris wasn't, wasn't uh, beat up. The Germans were, were they, they saved Paris. They didn't, uh, they just surrendered the city and, and it wasn't, wasn't, a, wasn't a demolished at all, you know. So I, I was there and I enjoyed that trip and did, we did lots of touring before we went back to uh, Camp Lucky Strike, waiting for our ship. Coming back, we came, the war's still on, we had the convoy. Everywhere you would look, there were sh boats, ships. That was, uh, that was a trip was, uh, oh, I think that was uh, roughly 12 days, I believe. And uh, then we came to New York. And uh, from New York, I was at uh, Fort Dix and got, uh, got a 60-day leave. And... Uh, I was in Philadelphia in the, in the uh, 
the, the, on VE Day, May 8th, I was in Philadelphia. I was in the railroad station waiting for a, a, a train home, called my mom from the railroad station, and she said, well, you know, your sister Jean, who was sis next to me, she said, your sister Jean got married uh, while you were away, and she lives in Philadelphia, so she gave me her telephone number, and I called my sis, and she said, oh, don't go home. You come out here, then I'll go home with you here, and probably the next day or something, which is what we did, yeah. That was a happy day in Philadelphia, yeah, yeah. I went in, just a short of three years, I went in and late summer, I guess it was, 43, and I was July 1, 46, almost, almost three, yeah. I went in as a private, and I got all the way up to corporal. <laughs> this is the uh, expert infantry badge, and out of my company, <clears throat> there were only two of us that got that, and, and I used, and I got five dollars a month extra pay when I got that. This is the combat infantry badge that uh, that I got for being, you know, infantry. Well, this is the European Theater Medal with the two battle stars. I had uh, Central Europe and, and Ardennes, or, you know, Battle of the Bulge or Ardennes. Yeah. This is my dog tags, 33703802. Army serial number and dog tags. You know, to go from a, to go from a small town uh, and a wonderful family, religious family and so on, and to go into a infantry div division, infantry usin, unit, uh, these were guys that were from all walks of life, it was very, very enlightening for a young guy who, who had been from a good family and a good town and everything. It was, it was, a, it was a, quite an experience, yeah. But it, I must say, it, um, it set me up <clears throat> to look out for myself and to look ahead and worry about the future and sort of forget the past. Yeah.